Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship at Catoctin Presbyterian Church online. Uh, it is World Communion Sunday today, and so we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper together. And if you hadn't planned on that, then uh, while we're getting started, you might want to find some bread and some juice so you can participate at the end of the service. And uh, we're looking forward to that. Today also, the uh, liturgists are going to be, uh, it, well, it says Leif Larson on, on the screen there, but uh, came across a, a bunch of videos from the Presbyterian Church of uh, mission partners from around the world who had prepared liturgy for World Communion Sunday. And so that's what we're using today, and that's who's going to be doing our liturgy with us. So uh, many of them are in different languages. The text uh, for everything that's being said will be on the screen. Uh, I'm not going to do any translations for you, uh, so you'll just have to uh, uh, read along or listen along and feel it in your spirit. But it's a reminder that there are folks around the globe who worship the same Christ, the same God as we, and uh, celebrating the communion uh, uh, sacrament this morning. So, uh, with that, we will go ahead and begin our service today. Good morning. Grace and peace from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all today. Welcome to Catoctin Presbyterian Church Worship Online. I'm Pastor David Douthat, and we are really glad to have you with us today. Whether you're a lifelong member or a first-time visitor, whether you're with us live online or watching on the video later, whether you're a devoted disciple of Jesus or not even sure if you believe in God, whoever you are, wherever you are, you are welcome here with us. We'd love for you to let us know that you were here, what's on your mind, and if you have any prayer requests. So leave us a note in the chat, or leave a comment on the video, or send us an email at cpc at catoctin.org. If you're with us live and haven't already done so, please mute your microphone and stop your camera during the service but then go ahead and join in the readings and responses and sing the hymns because God will enjoy hearing you whether we can or not. We have a time of fellowship after the service is over, so if you can, please stick around and say hello to your fellow worshipers. Well, now, worship is our number one job as disciples. So, Let's put everything else down for a moment. Take a few deep breaths. Calm our hearts and minds. And let's give ourselves fully to the Lord as we begin our service this morning. Once again, the peace of Christ be with you all.
Let us worship God. Nos reunimos desde el occidente y hasta el oriente, desde el sur y hasta el norte, para celebrar al Dios de paz que nos acompaña en nuestras acciones de paz. Este Dios de paz nos acompaña en todas las circunstancias que nos rodean. Le alabamos. Amén. Let us pray. Mwari wedu, musiki wedu, nyadenga wedu. Bless us with discomforted easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships. Bless us with anger at injustice, oppression and the exploitation of people. Bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation and war. Bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's join in singing our hymn.
աստծո փարության դիմաց կջանշնանք մեր թերությունները աստծո ողորմած լալուն դիմաց կհամարցակին ճշմարտությունը խոստովանիլ մեր անցերուն մասին եւ մեր աբրած աշխարհի նկատմամբ որպես աստծո զավակները եկեք խոստովանինք մեր հանցանքները լնուսալի ربنا وإلهنا الرحيم خالق الكون وما فيه لقد وهبتنا بسخاء عالما غنيا ومتنوعا ولكننا ما زلنا نصر على العيش بانانيه وطمع نعترف اننا شوهنا الخليقه وسممنا بيئتنا بممارستنا الاستهلاكيه ولمصالحنا الشخصيه أن تجعلتنا إخوة وأخوات بالمسيح وأردتنا أن نكون واحدا لكننا بنينا الجدران وفصلنا بيننا وبين قريبنا الإنسان لقد أعطيتنا الحكمة وموهبة الإبداع ولكننا استخدمناها للتحاير على الآخرين وتطوير أسلحة للدمار والموت أعطيتنا الشريعة لتنظيم حياتنا ومجتمعاتنا ولكننا سخرناها للانتقام من أعدائنا واخترنا الحرب بدل السلام لقد تجاهلنا الفقير والضعيف وكرمنا الغني والقوي ولم نتصرف بحسب مشيئتك اغفر لنا يا رب لأننا نجرؤ على التباهي بإنجازاتنا البشرية غير معترفين بأنك أنت وحدك تستحق التسبيح فانظر إلينا برأفتك ومحو آثامنا Աստված մեզ ընդունած է Հիսուս Քրիստոսի վրա մեր ունեցած հավատքին վկայությունով, որուն միջոցով մեղքերու թողությունը ստացանք։ Թողան օգնե մեզ որ ամեն ադեն անոր խաղաղությունը սփրենք մեր շրջանագին ու աշխարհին։ Ամեն։ Children of good uh, children of God believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Turn to a person near you, placing open hand palm together before you at chest high, and say, "Paul Prata Wei Pon." Paul Prata Wei Pon. Paul Prata Wei Pon. and also with you the peace of the lord jesus christ be with you all let us pray the prayer of illumination holy spirit grant us openness and give us understanding of what each one of us needs to receive through holy scripture when we are facing a difficult choice between the easy and the right decision help us to choose the narrow path we also pray for all who are about to set on an adventurous journey of faith anywhere in the world amen amen Our scripture lesson this morning is very brief. It is one verse. Excuse me. A little crumb in my throat there. We have one verse for our scripture this morning. It comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, um, chapter 13, verse 33. We did this actually not too long ago, but uh, it seemed appropriate to revisit this. So listen. 
for the word of God. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. May God bless to us this and every reading from Holy Scripture. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It's World Communion Sunday, and we're talking about uh, communion and having bread and things like that. And so we've got some basic ingredients here. We have some water. We have sugar, we have yeast, we have some olive oil, some salt, and flour. And with those basic ingredients, we're going to make some bread. And we're going to talk about it uh, in ways that hopefully will uh, help us think about our faith as well. Jesus told this story about the woman who was baking bread and who put yeast in her, uh, in her, with her flour. Okay, so here's our yeast, right? So we're going to put that in the bowl. And the yeast uh, represents the kingdom of God, as it's in that parable. And uh, it also uh, represents faith in other places. You know, if you had faith like a little bit of yeast, it'll, it'll do great things, right? So, and with the yeast, we're going to add water. And of course, theologically, water reminds us of our baptism. And our baptism reminds us of all the things that God did with water. You know, the creation, the, the Red Sea, the, uh, um, well, all the things, right? And then we're also going to include some sugar, and that's going to be for to keep the yeast happy. So we're going to mix these together. Now, they didn't have cane sugar in the Bible, so they would have used honey um, instead of sugar, but we're using sugar. And uh, uh, in the scriptures, it talks about that as um, it talks about God's word being as sweet as honey and God's grace being as sweet as honey. And um, we can think of God's presence with us being as sweet as honey. So we're going to let that sit in a nice warm place for a few minutes until it mixes together. And um, for about 10 minutes. Now, if, if we think of the yeast as faith and the water as our baptism and the sugar as the sweetness of God's word and God's uh, holy presence, then those are the key ingredients for getting what we need out of a life of discipleship. And um, it also takes time. And so, like we have this sitting over here now, it's going to sit on the stove where it's nice and warm so that it can eat away on the sugar. But um, uh, that it takes time for those things to mix in our lives to, to produce the energy that we need for the life of faith. Okay, so we have been meditating on the sweetness of God's word and our baptism, and we have this lovely, now frothy mix of faith and baptism and, and the Word. And we're going to add that to our flour. Now, uh, flour, if we take it from wheat, um, it has a lot of references in Scripture, of course. And uh, the, uh, God's providence is demonstrated by flour and wheat, uh, God promises in, in the end of all things and in uh, restoring uh, God's people that 
uh, God says, I will feed them with finest wheat. And it represents uh, growth and discipleship. Uh, if you think about Jesus' parables about how the wheat has to fall into the earth and then produces 30, 60, 100 times more. Um, and it, so there's also the sense of community that comes with wheat, that you bring in the harvest of the wheat and, and grind it up and, and uh, all of those become one together. And so uh, as we add our yeast mixture, our baptism, our faith in God's presence and, and God's word to that, to that community or the community that is waiting to happen. Um, and then we mix that in. Then it starts to transform this community, transform the promise of providence and it starts to pull together now you can see it's not quite there yet and so we're going to need some more water So our community has come together with the waters of baptism and God's word to us and God's providence, all those things coming together. Now, one of the things that happens then is uh, that sometimes the community being formed undergoes some uh, hardships. hardship and we're going to get beat up just a little bit and there's something about adversity that helps in forming community and so we are we uh, discover in adversity that we need each other <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> oh wow did that hurt you as much as it did me mm. I got a score on that one. <laughs> so, there's our community brought together. Now we're going to uh, oil our bowl. Well, that's a good bit of the uh, olive oil. Now, olive oil, of course, represents blessing. And... Uh, God's presence again, and in particular, the Holy Spirit. So God's blessing and the presence of the Holy Spirit anointing our bread here. And we're going to let this sit for uh, a good time while it um, rises. Okay, it's been some time. Again, uh, discipleship and community take time, and we see that the dough has grown, the uh, community has grown, and that often happens when they are spending time together uh, with the Word of God and uh, bearing one another's burdens and all those sorts of things. So, here we are, We're also going to add some salt so i forgot to do that uh, earlier but um doesn't i don't think it makes too much difference when it goes in but uh, we're going to put, put a little salt in here so salt um you might remember that jesus referred to the disciples as being the salt of the earth and that meant that they are representatives and they're they're the ones who bring flavor from the kingdom of god into the world and so you need salt. And I've done this recipe without the salt, and it's it's boring. It's bland. Uh, you need the salt. Um, now, salt also, we think about salt sometimes about the saltiness of our tears. And so sometimes we think of it that way, that uh, as we are uh, intimate with each other emotionally and sharing uh, our pain with each other, and weeping, we weep with those who weep. 
uh, it says, and we su we support those who are in pain. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and. our recipe and now we're going to shape this and spread it out a little bit because the church needs to spread out and it can't just sit still it's got to get out into the world so. Okay, and we're going to anoint it again with a little bit of oil. One of the interesting things that I find about bread is that um, it's remarkably uh, adaptable. And you can put anything you want in bread. You could put fruit in your bread. You can put... You can put fruit, you could put, and other sweet things. You can put um, vegetables and savory things. You can put all sorts of uh, herbs or um, spices. You can make it sweet, you can make it hot, you can do whatever you want to with it. Uh, you can put meat in it, you can put dairy in it, you can put cheese in it, right? Um, all kinds of, you can put sweet things, you can put sour things in it. You can start it from fermented mash of something, right? If you're making sourdough. So uh, it's remarkably adaptable. And so is the church. And so is the kingdom of God. It's all kinds of things that can go into bread, but it's still the one loaf. And Paul said the the, the bread that we bless and the bread that we break? Is it not the body of Christ? And are we not one because we share in the one loaf? And so on this World Communion Sunday, we're going to pop this in the oven and uh, uh, remember the adaptability of God's people, the diversity of God's people, and the deliciousness of of God's people together in community. Thanks be to God. And we're going to see that bread again soon. I'm going to take a moment and uh, with the whole community of faith around the world and through throughout the centuries, uh, reaffirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And the Apostles' Creed goes back to the uh, fourth century, and it was a, a, a baptismal creed. So this is a, a summary of some, some of our faith and theology, dating back almost to the beginnings of the church, and uh, it is used around the world and has been for all these centuries. And so uh, this is a, a collection of folks, uh, again, from around the world uh, sharing their faith. The words will be on the screen so that you also can join in. So let us affirm what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. Dikulupirira, mungu watate wampa mvionse, ule ngeza kumwamba ndiza pansi. Ime su Kristo, su uniko iho, Senyor Muestro. Jenž se počal z Ducha Svatého, narodil se z Marie Pany, di geleden heeft onder Pontius Pilatus, is gekruisigd, gestorven en begraven, nedergedaald ter helle. Din triti mera na standa apo to nekron, anelthonda istu suranus, Καθεζωμένον εν δεξιά Θεού Πατρός Παντοδυνά μου. A test feltámadását és az örök életet. 
Amen. Amen. We turn to our morning prayers now, and uh, we will add our prayers during the communion liturgy, but we want to think a little bit about our joys and concerns and laments of the day and of the week. Um, and so I, I'd invite you, if you have something that you would like to add, to uh, include it in the, in the chat if you're watching live, or send us an email at cpc at catoctin.org or to me at pastor at catoctin.org or leave a comment with the video. But uh, we have uh, these many prayers and these are, uh, these are the larger community in the world uh, and things that we have been praying for for quite a long while, uh, most of them. We want to remember all the folks who are suffering with COVID-19, including the president and first lady. And that was, of course, uh, uh, shocking news. And so we want to remember them, all those who are in quarantine, the survivors, the frontline workers, and, and all those who have died and those who are grieving. Uh, we're praying for greater resilience and strength, especially for God's people and um, that the church can help others to grow in that resilience and strength as we continue to see one uh, hardship after another piling up this year. Um, so our, our uh, uh, teachers and learners, uh, the folks in Beirut, people suffering from disasters, uh, the bereaved, um, the poor, the, the hungry, the prisoners, victims of violence. And I, I don't want to dismiss all the other things, but so on. <laughs> there, there they all are. Um, okay. And uh, <laughs> uh, as we move to our our community closer to home. Uh, Jeff tells us happy birthday this past week to wife Laura, who is officially an IHOP senior now. So, <laughs> uh, so happy birthday to Laura. We're glad you were born. Um, so we continue to pray for Pam, Connie, Brenda, Aaron, Kevin, um, Jeff, Nancy, Kathy, and Kathy, and Jonathan. Uh, we have several members in the congregation who, who have Parkinson's disease, and we want to remember them today. Uh, the family and friends of Winston Porter, who died this week. Winston was a member of our congregation for uh, quite a few years. His wife, Linda, of course, also. And Linda was on the uh, pastor nominating committee that called me. They uh, moved south to be closer to their kids some years ago, but uh, we, we heard that Winston joined the church victorious this week. And so we are uh, praying for Linda and for all the family and uh, that the Lord will receive Winston into the arms of his mercy. Praying for Angie, we've been praying for her after uh, some health problems and she's now facing surgery. So we want to remember her. Um, Kim also recovering from surgery. surgery. Joan, who's, been, uh, who's home. Um, Tina Teresa Phil, my Aunt Jean, who is home from rehab after having broken her leg. Uh, Jennifer, who is uh, undergoing treatments. Um, for Hazel, Peter, uh, Jeff's friend, Barbara, and Amanda. We give thanks for the glorious weather and thanks for answered prayers. So again, if you have other joys or concerns or laments that you would like for us to include, uh, please lift, lift those up and uh, you can drop that in the chat. Um, or as I said, send us an email or a message and we will offer the prayers of the people in our communion liturgy coming up. Uh, so our hearts are now turning toward our communion liturgy, and we have uh, some special music to, uh, to help us move in that direction.
Well, that's, uh, now I have to try and do this without crying. So, <laughs> <sighs> beloved, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Scriptures tell us they'll come from north and south and east and west to sit together at table in the kingdom of heaven. We are not quite together as we do this, but our hearts are together and our spirits are together and the Lord binds us together by the power of the Holy Spirit as we join in this sacrament. And we are together with our brothers and sisters around the globe, our, uh, our siblings in faith, our family of faith on every continent in every corner of the earth, except that it's round. And uh, all God's children are gathered, not only today, but throughout all of history. In every time and place, God has called faithful people into this life of discipleship. I am so sorry. And um, God calling people into the life of discipleship. <laughs> well, that was channel nine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in these days, nothing really works the way we expect it to. Nothing is normal. And so we, we have to trust in the Lord who is... Uh, providing for us, caring for us, leading us, in some ways shaking out all the things that would distract us. And what is of critical importance is the relationships between us and the love that God has poured out for us in Jesus Christ as demonstrated uh, in this sacrament as we remember his sacrificial debt and as he gave himself for us, then we can open our hearts to those around us and treat each one as a child of God, whether we know them or not, whether they deserve it or not. God knows and God loves them. And so as we come to the table of the Lord, our table here, your table there, wherever you are, wherever we are, this is the Lord's table. He is our host, and he welcomes us to come and uh, has poured out these gifts for us that we might have life and have it abundantly. So much life that we can share it with those who are around us and those who are in deep need. So the Lord invites all who trust and believe in him to come and taste and see that the Lord is good. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you thanks and praise, Lord our God. And we rejoice in all your blessings to us. We give you thanks for the beauty of creation. In daytime and at night, your handiwork is on display. And all of the brightness and all of the darkness that comes together, the beauty and intricacy of it all, the interweaving of life. It's remarkable. And we praise you for that and praise you that we are a part of it and that you have given us charge over this world invited us to be your partners. And so we pray for the created order, and we pray, Lord, that we would have hearts and minds and eyes and hands and feet to be good stewards of it, to care for it and tend it gently. 
we give you thanks that you have poured out your grace upon us in Jesus Christ, that though he was in divine form, he emptied himself and took on human form and that of a servant, obedient even to death on the cross. And so you have exalted him and lifted him above all names, given him the name above all names, and we too praise our Lord Jesus Christ and exalt him above all. We thank you that in him we find forgiveness for our sin, that we find direction and meaning and purpose for our life, and that we are uh, capable of following where he leads and serving as he served. We give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit, which you have poured out upon us, which transmits to us your grace, convicts us of that sin, and, and energizes us with the resurrection power of Jesus. It gives us the spiritual gifts to do the work that you call us to do and bears fruit in us as we grow together in your kingdom. We give you thanks for the gift of the church, not only our congregation, but certainly our congregation, for all the beloved saints of Catoctin, for your church throughout our area, for your church throughout our nation, for your church around the globe. Lord, we are indeed human, and we don't always do the best job of showing forth your kingdom, but we bless you that we have that calling and the ability and that ideal to exhibit the kingdom of God to the world. So as the prayer said at the beginning, give us just enough of that foolishness to believe that we can change the world. Bless your church, Lord, that we may love one another and do it well, that we may love those around us, that we may break down dividing walls and extend the kingdom of heaven, especially to those who are in need. And Lord, we, we know so many who are in need today. And so we lift them all up before you for those who are struggling in this pandemic and from this pandemic, we pray for your healing. We pray for our president and for his family and for the staff and all those who may have been uh, infected or, or exposed to the virus. We pray though, Lord, also for all those not of high station who have been profoundly impacted by this pandemic either because of the disease itself or the economic impact or, or the loss of loved ones. We pray for an end to this suffering. And we pray for strength for those who are leading the charge against it. We pray, Lord, for all those who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit, for those who are recovering from surgeries and procedures, for those who are fighting infections, for those who are fighting cancer, for those who have acute issues, for those who have long-term illnesses. Gracious Lord, pour out your spirit upon them to heal them in their bodies. For those who suffer from mental illness, we pray for their peace for those who are lost in their spirits, or those who are uh, racked with bitterness and anger or fear or anxiety. We pray, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit to heal their spirits. We pray that you would heal our land 
of the divisions among us, the economic divisions, the racial and ethnic divisions, the religious divisions, the political divisions. Heal our land, O Lord, that we might see each one as a child of God, and that that would be our highest view wiping out all the other concerns. Help us to grow together and to live into our highest ideals of justice for all. Lord, I pray for each soul who is gathered with us here today and watching this service, joining in in this service. Lord, you know our hearts, you know our joys and our sorrows and our hopes and our fears. I pray for each and every one that you will reveal yourself in a powerful way and open all of our hearts, minds, and spirits to all that you have in store for us. Lord, we thank you for this sacrament of bread and the cup, that in this we are joined together with our Lord Jesus Christ by the mysterious power of your Holy Spirit, and as we are joined with him, we are joined with each other. And so pour out your Spirit once more, we pray, on these elements at all our tables, which are your table that we may know the power of your grace. All these things we pray in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was dead, but now is risen and who reigns eternally with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. On the night when he was arrested, our Lord Jesus was a table with his disciples, and he took bread. Here's our bread. The bread that we made. The bread that is his body. And that we are his body now. He took the bread. And after he had given thanks, as we have done in his name, he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the meal, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, as we have done in his name, he gave it to them and said, this cup is the new covenant, which is sealed in my blood, and poured out for the forgiveness of sins. All of you drink from it and do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we show forth the Lord's saving death until he comes again in his glory. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Thanks be to God for these holy gifts. And let's join together 
Here we go again. We're going to close with the Lord's Prayer. And once again, we have uh, folks from around the world who are going to be leading us in the prayer, but you know it, and you can say it uh, as you know it. I need to do this. There we go. And now, O oh God, on this World Communion Sunday, when we celebrate the whole world coming together at Christ's table, to know your grace and to feel your presence, we pray together, joining across time and space, in the words you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Papa no kino siella. Si puyo respecti no. Kho hai pen din kong praong ma tang yu. Kho hai pen pei tam pratai kong praong. Nai sawan pen yang rai. Kho hai pen yang nan nai pen di lo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas. Así como también nosotros perdonamos a quienes nos ofenden. Wala tutkil na fita jriba. لكن نجينا من الشرير. آمين. 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 I invite you to open your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ today, that he can be Lord and Savior for you in a new way today. There's so much going on in the world and that things are changing. So uh, we need to revisit our Lord uh, time and time again to see the new lessons that he is bringing us to. And so if you have questions about your faith or things that you want to pray about or uh, anything else that you would like to talk about, please let me know and I would be glad to spend some time with you. We take time in the service to give thanks to God for all that we have received. And we are indeed grateful for all the financial support that we have received at the church during the pandemic. Uh, thank you to all who have uh, helped us out and have been keeping up with your pledges and gifts. If you would like to do that and are financially able, then uh, we do invite that and encourage you to, to do that, um, to practice your, the, the joy and responsibility of stewardship. And uh, as always, we have several ways that you can uh, help support the church financially, either at the website or by sending us a check or um, uh, using uh, Smile at Amazon and uh, that choosing us as your charity. Uh, those will all help us financially. And we are still collecting food at the Loudon Hunger for Loudon Hunger Relief with the big blue box on the steps of the church. And uh, saw there were a few things in there this week, so that's good. We're glad to have that back. We were kind of going through the dog days of summer when there wasn't too much in the box. So uh, folks still need help. And if you are able, then we encourage you to please go ahead and do that. Um, well, that's weird. <laughs> okay, that's... How about that? Well, let's go back to that. I, I hit the link. And, <laughs> and, I yeah, I, I just went to Amazon there for a second. So I'm, I'm back. Okay. Um, like I said, nothing, nothing goes as expected in 2020. Uh, we also invite you to prayerfully consider gifts to the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Program and uh, all the work that they are doing to help with the many disasters that going on around the globe. And uh, so go to their website, pda.pcusa.org to learn more or give us a call here uh, or drop me a note and we'll get you hooked up with them. If you need assistance yourself, either with 
uh, getting out and doing things or having somebody do some things for you or just to be in touch with folks to have some prayers or if you are in financial need then please give us a call at our helpline 571-293-6543 and let's offer ourselves to the lord then in dedication O god who calls us from death to life we give ourselves to you and with the church in every age we thank you for your saving love in jesus christ our lord in whose name we pray. Amen. Let's sing our way. a few announcements for you. The session is called an electronic congregational meeting on Zoom for next Sunday, October 11th. Having passed the uh, changes to the bylaws at our meeting last week, and that was successfully done, thanks to all who were able to uh, join us in person. Um, we're, uh, this meeting will be for the purpose of electing officers for the ensuing term and to fill two vacancies. And so if you have a suggestion for, for a nomination, we will take nominations from the floor, uh, but you will need to have talked to the person that you want to nominate to make sure that they would agree to it. But we have a full slate. Uh, we have for the ensuing term, uh, uh, Connie Moore and Sue Douglas and Logan McIntosh, who will each be taking a second term on session. And the two vacancies that we have, uh, we, we are, uh, going to be nominating Richard Herndon and Kirsten Woods. And so we are very pleased about all of those names. But again, we will take nominations from the floor um, if, uh, if such a thing is necessary. So if you have any questions about that, please give me a call or send me a note and, uh, or talk with Sue Douglas and we'll uh, answer any questions that you have. Coming up this week here in this very Zoom room, our inquirers class is going to be meeting in just a little while at 1.15. Um, the operations committee is meeting four o'clock on Tuesday, the prayer meeting on Wednesday, book club on Thursday evening, and then next Sunday, uh, the usual sorts of things. We've got the adult Sunday school, which is now meeting in the Zoom room, or at least they did today, so we'll see how that turned out and uh, worship and then the congregational meeting. So we hope that you can take part in the church as you feel called and able to do. Again, we invite you to the prayer meeting on Wednesday here in this Zoom room, and uh, we pray for the world, for those we love, and even for ourselves. So if you can join us, that's lovely. We are delighted to have you. If you can't and would like for us to be praying, send us a note uh, with that prayer request or um, just be praying at that hour with us. We have a sermon series coming up called All God's Children. We're look, that's going to be starting on the 18th, uh, all things being equal. As the nation has been wrestling with questions of uh, racial justice, we are going to take a look at our theology and practice in the church of what does that mean and what is race and what is racism and why, sh why should we be concerned and how can we do good and, to, and be better? So it, it's going to be a five week series. Um, so we invite you to prayerfully uh, prepare yourself in that and also to pray for those who are preparing. And uh, it's an important conversation. And uh, we will also be giving you opportunities for uh, conversation and discussion uh, after the services. So we'll give you more details about that as, as we get closer. But uh, uh, pray for us as we prepare for that 
uh, important conversation. And you can also, of course, share our service with your friends and family, anyone that you think might benefit. Uh, send along the invitation to them uh, by email or Facebook, or just send them the link to our previously recorded sermons. So uh, I think that's it. And oh, well, one more thing. Yeah, we, we've got uh, the after service poll. So one or two questions, it'll take one or two minutes. And uh, if you're on Zoom, you get to do that. If you're watching after the fact, uh, or if, um, uh, yeah, if you're watching after the fact, you don't get to do that. So uh, looking forward to that. Hope you can stick around for just a minute or so and uh, finish that up with us. And don't forget to register to vote and to vote. All right, so uh, <clears throat> now as we prepare for the charge and benediction, let us uh, extend a hand of blessing to those around us. And so, uh, beloved, as you leave this service of worship, be of good cheer and render to no one evil for evil, but support the faint-hearted and help the suffering. Honor all people, rejoicing in the love, mercy, and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, be in prayer. And whomever you meet, treat them like a child of God. Whatever you say, Breathe grace and peace, doing everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, place his cheek next to yours, and give you peace, both this day and forevermore. And let all God's children say, Amen.